I thought we'd for sure get him at the recreation area we were just at, but no dice on that, so I'm just like, oh. Every state in the U.S. has its own set of signature birds. These species are either most common in, or sometimes can only be found in that particular state. One such species is the yellow-billed magpie. Only found in the state of California, the Golden State is really the only place in the world to see this beautiful and charismatic bird. Fortunately for us, we happen to be in California and set aside some time to try and track down the yellow-billed magpie. So we're starting to get to the place where we could actually have a chance to see the yellow-billed magpie. So we're going to start keeping our eyes peeled and maybe we can get one that's going to fly over the road real quick. Although even if we do see it like that, we are going to want to try to find one that'll give us some better views. So we can showcase this unique species as kind of a California specialty. Interestingly, yellow-billed magpies can actually be found in some of the more urban and developed parts of California. Our friend and professional guide, Rachel, had some spots lined up for us to try and find these fascinating birds. So we are officially in yellow-billed magpie territory, so we are all on yellow-billed magpie patrol. They are this awesome bird that's endemic to California. This is excellent habitat for them. We're gonna go out today and try to find some active nest colonies in a few different spots. Um, they are these really long-tailed, very conspicuous birds with these beaks that are, what color is it? Oh yeah, yellow. Aptly named, you gotta love it. The banana build magpie. Yes. On our way to our first destination, we were able to get some brief looks. We were driving down the road and we actually got to see some yellow-billed magpies as we were moving. This is a pretty busy road and there's a lot of private property around so we're not gonna stop here, but we're hoping that since we saw some already that means they're abundant in the area. We ended up at a recreation area where yellow-billed magpies had been reported, hoping to get some closer views. Here, we got to work searching, finding some exciting western bird species. Rachel heard a Nuttles woodpecker, so we're going to try to track that down. Also saw slender-billed white-breasted nuthatch, which may be split sometime in the future, so that's kind of a neat one to have. But hopefully we'll be able to track down this Nuttles and then also see some yellow-billed magpies. It's been kind of frustrating because we've seen them all over on the way and there's really no good place to pull over. So now that we're walking, I'm hoping we can see one and get to spend some time with it and look at it, get some videos, enjoy all the cool different features. We were particularly interested in getting looks at the Nuttles woodpecker, which much like the yellow-billed magpie, is pretty much entirely based in California. We were able to get our life reviews of this species in a dead tree near the road. Woohoo, you guys just got your life for Nettles Woodpecker. What, what? I'm definitely gonna have to add the Nettles Woodpecker to my list of species that I did not expect to be so excited to see. But getting the view of it in person, it's a really nice looking woodpecker. The male has some beautiful red on the back of the head. And yeah, I'm much more pleased with it than I expected to be actually. Nuttles woodpeckers have black backs with white speckles, white undersides, and black and white striped heads. Males have a conspicuous red patch on the back of their head that the females lack. Nuttles woodpeckers are birds of the most western coasts of the United States and Mexico. In fact, for the most part they can only be found in California and Baja California where they reside year-round. Like most other woodpeckers, much of the Nuttles woodpecker's diet consists of insects and other small invertebrates that they find climbing on branches and investigating crevices in the bark. Look for these woodpeckers in oak woodlands in their native range. Finally got eyes on the Nuttles. It was very pretty, kind of like one of the ones that wasn't super on my radar about when we were thinking about coming here, but like now getting eyes on it, it's like, wow, that's a really beautiful woodpecker. So. Awesome to see that one, now let's go get some magpies. After spending some time with the Nuttles woodpeckers, we continued down the road, finding even more western bird species. So up here in this dead tree, we have this absolutely gorgeous male western bluebird. 
in perfect early morning light. He's absolutely gorgeous. We also have a California scrub jay who's being remarkably obliging. And a few moments ago, we had an absolutely gorgeous and undeniably cute male black-chinned hummingbird. There were many different birds to see along the road, including bush tits, lesser goldfinches, acorn woodpeckers, and ash-throated flycatchers. There was also a subspecies of a familiar bird that could at some point possibly become its own species. So fun fact about the red-winged blackbirds that we're seeing and hearing in here, these are the California bicolored subspecies. And you'll notice in the males, their epaulets are purely red. They don't have that kind of orangish yellow stripe across the bottom. And when you look at the females, uh, they're darker than what you typically see in red-winged blackbirds. And you find these guys nesting in the San Joaquin Valley as well as in the foothills in the western slope of the Sierra Nevada. And from what I've been told, there potentially could be a split. So if you see this one, put it in your pocket because you could get an armchair lifer out of it. Blackbirds are super interesting with just that red. And I feel like their vocalizations also sound different too, but even like if they're not separated, it's still kind of a cool subspecies to look at. Even though we spent a lot of time checking out the birds along the road, we still hadn't had any close-up encounters with yellow-billed magpies yet. We're now moving on from this road where we had a lot of great birds to try to focus on our yellow-billed magpies. Those are ones that I'm super excited to get close-up views of. Um, that bill looks so distinctive. I'm excited to just kind of stare at one and look at all the ID features. So hopefully we get some good looks at those. Got some really good birds at the recreation area, most notably the Nuttles woodpecker. Uh, but we still don't have any really quality looks at the yellow-billed magpie. So we're going to try to go to some other places and see if maybe they'll cooperate there. As we were driving, we made a decision to stop at a place where some yellow-billed magpies were reported earlier in the week. Almost immediately, we could tell that our target bird was present. Stopped at a boat launch here for yellow-billed magpie views, and uh, they're calling right now. I felt like you were getting worried. I was getting worried for a moment there, you know, because we, 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 you know, we'd seen them this morning, but there was just no good place to pull over, and then I thought we'd for sure get them at the recreation area we were just at, but no dice on that, so I'm just like, oh. Up in the tree, we got our first truly quality views of yellow-billed magpies. Excellent views of the yellow-billed magpie, and there's multiple individuals in here making that shattering, gruff noise that you're probably hearing in the background. So we finally saw one that just perched out on the edge of a branch, and these are some beautiful birds. They have a really nice sheen to the back, beautiful coloration, and that bill stands out really well. Yellow-billed magpies have a black head, chest, back, and tail, with a white underside and white patch on the wings. They show an iridescent blue color that makes them look quite pretty. True to their name, they have a bright yellow bill, as well as yellow that sometimes extends up near the eye. These long-tailed birds can only be found in parts of California where they stay year-round, so if you want to see them, a trip to the Golden State is necessary. Yellow-billed magpies are in the same family as jays and crows. This is evident when watching them go about their daily lives. They are very agile and seem to move with purpose as they forage and communicate with each other. Yellow-billed magpies eat a wide variety of food items, including, but not limited to, insects, fruit, small rodents, carrion, and even scraps discarded by humans. This adaptable diet has allowed these birds to live in relative harmony with people, as they can be found in places such as orchards, parks, and even suburbs. Right behind me are two yellow-billed magpies, and uh, they're California endemic, so really thankful we had the opportunity to see them. But I love the way that they bound those long tails and that yellow bill. Just a super distinctive and a really awesome bird to see. Not only were we able to see some yellow-billed magpies up close, but we also got to see what their nests look like. It's back here in this tree, there's actually some old yellow-billed magpie nests, the big piles of sticks. It doesn't seem like they are actively on a nest right now, so maybe in the future they will be. After viewing the magpies for a while, eventually we headed out for our next adventure. What's really funny about this situation is there have been multiple times where we've been like, okay, that's probably enough uh, 
looks of these magpies and then all of a sudden as you're walking out you hear one chattering from somewhere near you or behind you and then you're like oh man but there's a magpie there i've got to go get more um so it's just kind of funny because it's such a cool species it's always tough to know when you're ready to leave or if you're gonna wish you stayed longer it's always exciting to see a bird that only lives in a specific state or region especially one as beautiful and active as the yellow-billed magpie we certainly got enough great looks at these birds to be totally satisfied with our experience. And it's a good thing too, because we won't have a chance to see them again until the next time we travel to California. Fortunately for us, Rachel knew the right spots to find these magpies. If you'd like more information on her guiding services, check out the link in the description below. And as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Badgerland Birding.